Well, without a doubt, President Biden clearly believed, probably still does believe, that he could win re-election. But that view is not shared by many voters. And uh, with no sign that those the concerns that were raised after the with that debate in June were going to be addressed sufficiently. And in fact, we're only going to raise more concerns. And I think that, um, you know, as President Biden said in his letter, this was a decision that it's not just his own interest, but it's the party's interest and and what, what is in the public interest. And that's what it's important for leaders to know how to govern and to know when to um, to step aside. I wouldn't have picked Vice President Trump to be vice president, but I think she was not qualified to be president. So let's start there. Number one. If they just paid 24 percent or 25 percent, either one of those numbers, they'd raise $500 million, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Folks, let me close with this. I know I'm not a young man. State the obvious. Well, I know. Well. Well. I don't. Folks. I don't walk as easy as I used to. I don't speak as smoothly as I used to. I don't deba debate as well as I used to. But I know what I do know. I know how to tell the truth. want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Thank you. Once my clenched fist went up, and it was high into the air. You've all seen that. The crowd realized I was okay and roared with pride for our country like no crowd I have ever heard before. Never heard anything like it. For the rest of my life, I will be grateful for the love shown by that giant audience of patriots that stood bravely on that fateful evening in Pennsylvania. 
Tragically, the shooter claimed the life of one of our fellow Americans, Corey Comparator. Unbelievable person, everybody tells me. Unbelievable. And seriously wounded. Two other great warriors spoke to them today. David Dutch and James Copenhaver. Two great people. I also spoke to all three families of these tremendous people. Our love and prayers are with them and always will be. We're never going to forget them. What's the, what's the consensus? Is there consensus? It was a very good meeting. You support the president? I support a great conversation that people are having. Is everybody behind the president? It's a family discussion. I'm not going to say any more. Was there any consensus in the room? Oh, we're having a good family conversation. Was there consensus in the room? It was not about consensus, ma'am. It was listening to discussions, so to opinions. But are the but Democrats behind the president? This Democrat is. It does matter that the party's behind him now, doesn't it? I think it matters that we have a, a unified party, yes. And, but are you? It doesn't seem that there is unity coming out of this meeting. It's a process. He, he just has to step down because uh, he can't win. And my colleagues need to recognize that. Are you supporting uh, him, sir? I'm going to support the nominee of my party. I'd certainly support President Biden, but I think we would be less endangered of a Trump presidency if we had a different candidate. He just tested positive for COVID. President Biden is remaining president, so he's not stepping down from that job. He's not stepping down as commander in chief. The Constitution would have or does lay out that the vice president takes over if the president is incapacitated or steps down or is not able to continue with his job. That is not what's happening here. Uh, Biden is stepping aside as the Democratic presidential candidate, and that's what's leaving a hole to fill. His endorsement of Harris means she will now have political momentum to take over at the top of the, the ticket. But the decision has to be made by Democratic delegates who will gather at the convention in August. And those delegates up until today were committed to Joe Biden because he won their support by being the, the Democratic candidate who won all of the Democratic primaries in uh, the 50 states and, and additional U.S. territories that had races over the last several months. And the fact that he is now not going to be the nominee will open the Democrats to some 
criticism. And you're already seeing that on the Republican side, that uh, President Biden being sort of jettisoned aside is seen as undemocratic with a small d. Uh, and that's that's a weakness that Republicans I expect we'll try to exploit. This is late in the game. Um, there have been concerns raised about President Biden's age, energy, ability to run effectively for more than a year now. And uh, this is the timing is very tight for Democrats. The convention, their convention begins on August 19th. They have four weeks to either solidify around a candidate, Vice President Harris being the logical choice, or have an open convention, which we haven't seen since 1968. 